Hey guys, it's Danny here, and I am back with a game. Um, I just found this game on Steam, and I thought it was interesting. So, I just I'm gonna play it, and it's called the stat the sorry, the sad story of Emmeline Burns. So let's go ahead and get started. New game. My name is Toma Andrews, and I am a victim of identity theft. Oh? It's all Aunt Catherine's fault. Of course, most things are, according to Mom. Mom. Stealing Mom's favorite dress when they were both schoolgirls was bad enough, but stealing the name of her first and only daughter? Now that's l low. Not many of us can sink Not many of us can s sorry, now that's low. Not many of us can sink to within our lifetimes. My name was supposed to be Amelia. Mom had, has always loved the name Amelia, though I don't know why. She wanted to call me Amelia if I was a girl and Thomas if I was a boy after her father. And then Aunt Catherine ruined everything. Aunt Catherine fell pregnant with her first child around the same time my mom found out she was going to have me. Their due dates were also very similar, only a few weeks apart. Though mom and Aunt Catherine had never been particularly close, they spent more time together during their twin pregnancies than they had done over the last decade. They attended the same hospital for their checkups and went to the same support group at the Civic Center. And their rocky relationship improved over complaints about bladder infl infections, morning sickness, and uncontrollable cravings for anchovies, mom, or smoked cheese, Aunt Catherine. And then Aunt Catherine stole my name. Aunt Catherine was one year younger than my mom. I'm gonna say mom because, like, it's, it sounds weird when I say mom. But she always got things first. That's what mom told me. I keep on saying mom. <laughs> she was the first to have her period, to pierce her ears, and to have a serious boyfriend. She was the first to have a baby, too. A baby girl. A girl called Amelia. Mom didn't know what to do. Having her dream name stolen away from her so suddenly, she had half a mind to confront Aunt Catherine about it, but did it in the end. She only just begun to repair her relationship with her sister, and she didn't want to ruin it. But she was still annoyed. She still is. Mom could have called me Amelia anyway, but the name didn't feel special to her anymore, not when Aunt Catherine had used it. In the end, after much deliberation, Mom decided to go with her second option, Thomas. Since I was a girl, however, Thomas was out of the question. Was there a female variant of Thomas then? Thomasa? Tom Thomasandra? Thomasetta? Maybe not. There was Toma. However, Toma Andrews, and that's how I got my name. That might explain why I don't like it very much. My name isn't really mine. Like, cloths were that were that are two sizes too big. It didn't fit me properly. It never had. Has. That's because it was never intended for me. If I had been called Amelia, would my life be any different? Would it change who I am? I don't know, because I've never been an Amelia. I'm just Toma, the weird girl with the weird name. And my name isn't the only weird thing about me. Ever since I can remember, my mom has been obsessed with family history. She says it's like playing detective, peeking back into the past with only fragments of information trying to find the truth. Mom took me to the library with her when I was small, so she could keep a watchful eye over my little blonde head while she delved into the 
Annals. I almost said a different word. <laughs> of our family's long lost history. There she would spend hours and hours searching through the through the online databases. And oh that when is this? I'm sorry. I don't know how when this story takes place. I should have um Yeah. Okay, and old archives on the hunt for articles about the Spencers or the Kendrills or the Lintons or the Becketts or the Brand Bradfords. Fortunately, our family used to be pretty rich back in the day. Mom says it's a lot easier to research your family tree if you come from a wealthy background. There are more records kept on the coming and going of the rich as opposed to street beggars and paupers. That's probably because of the money. As soon as the money is invalid, people will pay it. As soon as money is invol involved, not invalid, involved, people will pay attention to you. It was like that back in the 1700s and it and it's exactly the same. I remember that the floor of the library was hard, covered in a dark green carpet that was uncomfortable and scratchy. The, w the walls were a dull gray like the concrete blocks in a multi-story car park. Though mom got me a library card, I always got bored within the first half hour or so. There are only so many times you can reread volumes of the Goosebumps. Is this like nowadays? I don't know. <laughs> Despite these inconveniences, however, I still found the stories mom would tell me about my long dead relatives interesting. The stories sounded like they came from the pages of a book, not real life, not history, my history. There were stories about my great-great-grandfather, Zachary Kendall, who used to be a priest, but was fired from his post every after he physically assaulted a member of his congregation while drunk on Christmas Day. There were stories about my great-great-great-grandmother, Maribel Spencer, who ran away from home at the age of 15 to marry her middle-aged piano teacher, Roger Beckett. There were stories about my great-great-great-great-aunt, Rose Bradford, who was rumored to be a witch and claimed she could cur any ache or illness with a sprig of holly. Sprig of holly. I don't know why, but these stories my mom told me of unknown people from unknown times always resonated with me. Maybe it was because they were fictional characters or celebrities, but maybe because they weren't fictional characters or celebrities, but real people, my family, part of me. I wouldn't be alive right now without Zachary Kendall, even if he did beat up a member of his congregation, and I wouldn't be alive without Mary Bell Spencer, even if she did have a thing for older men who could play a semi-decent. For Ellis? Fior Ellis? I don't- I can't say that. <laughs> In a way, I owe them. I owe them a lot. I suppose what they say is true. Blood really is thicker than water. It is. And speaking of blood, the local library wasn't the only place my mom, mom's investigations led her. Oh no, that was just the tip of the iceberg. She used to take me to cemeteries a lot. Ooh, not just this cemetery. Borrow, borrow, bury all, borrow, bury, bar, I can't say that. Bar by, <laughs> sorry, Barbie. I'm gonna call it Barrowby. That's fine. All Saints, but cemeteries all across Lincolnshire, and sometimes even further afield to Yorkshire or what is? I'm sorry. What is up with these names? I can't pronounce them. <laughs> um, Lynchester. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. I'll be honest. I don't know if these are. Real places. Yorkshire 
I think that is a real place. I'm not quite sure. Um, if I'm mispronouncing these, I'm sorry. <laughs> the things, the thing about family history is, if you get obsessed with it, like mom, birth certificates and death certificates stop being enough. You want to see see real evidence of your ancestors' past lives for yourself. Hence, the graveyards. Lots and lots of graveyards. Every weekend, without fail, my mom would take me on a trip to a graveyard searching for ancestors. Sometimes we'd turn it into a game. we challenge one another to see who could find Rose Bradford's final resting place the quickest. The winner got to choose what we'd listen to in the car in the car on the way home. Being my mom's daughter, I hated her taste in music and I was desperate to beat her. I got quite good at finding graves, if I do say so myself. That, that's a little weird, but okay. That's a talent, I guess. Good job. <laughs> Even though I was around seven or eight my le and my legs weren't as long as my mom's. I was able to beat her nine times out of ten. I used to think she was going easy on me. Now, I'm not so sure. I just have a talent. I'm good at finding dead people. That, yeah, like I said, that's weird. <laughs> Even if they have been dead for two centuries and all that's left behind are bones. Now, let me just get one thing straight. I'm not crazy. I don't think dead people call out to me or anything. I've never seen a ghost before, excluding the ones in horror movies. Okay, this has to take place, like, nowadays, because, like, cars, online, horror movies, well, I think horror movies have been around for, like, centuries, but, like, I don't know. I guess it's just coincidence. But, yeah, I don't know. I think it takes place nowadays. If not, then maybe, like, a little earlier in the years? I don't know. I'm kind of down when it comes to, like, time, <laughs> but it's quite a strange coincidence. Whenever I went to a graveyard with my mom, I just knew where to look, almost instinctively. My feet just happened to lead me to a tombstone, and via some strange skill I might have inherited from Rose Bradford, this, yes, Rose Bradford, the self-proclaimed psychic, I was usually right. That might be why I'm so obsessed with cemeteries, even now. Ooh. Just like some people prefer hot weather, others cold, I like graveyards. They remind me of my childhood, a, a fun time spent with my mom, searching for my, searching for my relatives. Hold on, let me see. Okay, so you can't go back. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, snap. Okay, see. When I went out looking for graves with my mom, I was almost always right. Ever since I started attending St. Hugh's College, however, I only felt I, I only ever felt wrong. Though I get good grades in most of my classes, I'm hopelessly lost when it comes to anything beyond that. I have hardly any friends other than hey, Haiti, Hati, 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 and even she might turn against me if she knew how I felt about her. Oh. I'm nothing like Amelia Miller, who just so happens to be the, be in the same form as me. She, she's always surrounded by people. They all love her. Would they love me if I'd been called Amelia instead? I don't know. But I do know, even though it's unfair and ridiculous, and I don't dislike Amelia, I'm so jealous of her. Her parents are still together, and her dad has a good job. And she has nice skin and pretty blue eyes. And she's incredibly popular. I on, the other, I, on the other hand, am awkward and shy. And I can't hold a conversation with anybody other than Hattie. That might be another reason why I like graveyards. There are a lot of people in them, but they can't bother me like they do in school. They're dead, and that's perfectly fine by me. As they say, as the saying goes, dead men tell no tales. They only leave tales behind which can examine as which we can examine as we see fit that's why i came to borrow by borrow be all saints this friday instead of touching the bus to go to school 
I just wanted some time off, a few moments where I can stop being myself, a person I've never liked. If only I had been born as an Amelia, then my life would be so much better. I would be so much better. It's a graveyard. It is overcast for early autumn, and a thick layer of fog creeps along the ground. The grass is wet with morning dew, but the soil beneath it is firm and hard. I suppose that's to be expected. You wouldn't want to build a graveyard on marshland where people would run the risk of falling through the earth and into the graves. I might have an affinity for the dead, but not even I fancy popping in for an unexpected visit with Gerald Fisher, 1843 through 1912, an Aline wife of the above. It's cold too, the wind shakes snakes down my spine and I shiver. Oh, it's getting creepy. It isn't a rough wind, though instead it's soft, brushing past my cheeks and through my hair in an almost apologetic manner. The leaves on the trees are dark green, and some are already turning red and yellow, but the sun is, is but the sun in the sky is obscured by clouds, so everything looks gray. My feet crunch over the stray leaves with every step I take, but that's the only sound I can hear. Just me, the wind, and the leaves. Oh, this must be me! Oh, she's super adorable! She's got like little chubby cheeks. She's pretty. I like her. As I walk through these well-trodden paths, I pause, examining each tombstone that catches my interest. There's something strangely inviting about these old slabs of stone, almost as though they're greeting me. And why wouldn't they? I come here often enough. They should know me by now. Any, uh, any other mother would probably find their only daughter's obsession with the graveyards unsettling. Fortunately, from, fortunately, my mom is just as weird as I am, She does, so she doesn't question it. She must know my love of graveyards is all her fault. I nod my head in recognition as I passed each tombstone. Alistair Doncaster, Irene Douglas, Charlotte Draper, Doreen Hughes, Abel Johnson, Genevieve Parson, Aubrey Green Wedgwood, I was about to say Greenwood, no, Wedgwood. I wonder about these people, reduced to nothing more than names and bones. What lives did they lead? Were they happy, sad, or merely bemused by all the coincidences which led them into being? For Alcaster Don for Alistair Doncaster, that happened in 1879. For Irene Douglas, it was 1894. What would the world be like? What would the world like back then? What was the world like back then? When these people were alive and their footsteps, not mine, crunched the leaves and fell firmly against the compacted earth. I don't know. It's hard for me to imagine it. As I walk through the graveyard like Alice sinking into Wonderland, a heavy thought suddenly strikes me. What would it be like if I was already dead? Oh. That's creepy. The wind, the cold, I close my eyes. The cold wind blows across my cheeks and I swear I can almost smell it. The earth in my nostrils, the scent of decay. Ah. What was that sound? It was almost like a footstep. I heard it. I heard it. But that can't be. I'm the only person here, after all. At least I thought I was. Not anymore. Who's there? Oh, a young girl stands there, her arms held by her sides, her eyes wild and blue. Wait, what's that on her neck? 
Don't tell me she was abused. No, that she was choked to guess. Choked to death. Her hair is loose, light brown. Her fringe cut just above her eyebrows. She wears a white dress, long and modest, which falls to her ankles. See? If you see it right here, right there, she has like a bruise on her neck. Her dress is comprised of a number of layers and looks like something that belongs to another era, another time in England when Queen Victoria was on the throne and the horse and the carriage was still in the ma main way people got about, was still the main way people got about, and it was socially acceptable to wear bonnets in public. She looks like nobody I've ever seen before except characters in period dramas. There's something so unrealistic about her appearance. She looks like a doll. Yeah, she looks like a doll. Um, there's something so unrealistic about her appearance. I can hardly bring myself to believe that she's really real. Really real. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm doing something I rarely ever do. My curiosity unsticks my throat, and I found myself asking her a question. Are you going to a costume party? Hmm? Are you referring to this whole thing? That just doesn't look like it's something old, like some old thing. It's expensive, right? I believe it was rather dear when father first purchased it. Now, however, see, okay, she's like a modern day girl, okay, like, short skirt, um, choker, um, blazer, but yeah, she looks like a modern day girl, with, um, a choker, a short skirt, a blazer, um, and then she looks like a doll for, like, The past centuries, I don't know. I forgot how long a century is. <laughs> but yeah. We're like... Like in England. I... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah. I believe it... Yeah. I believe it was rather dear when Father first purchased it now, however. I'm not particularly well versed in this... Economy. Economy. Economy, girl, what? Economy. So I would not give you an answer. Father? What kind of girl calls their dad father? Maybe I'm just biased because my dad vanished before I was even born. Mom told me he couldn't cope with the commitment, which was qu quite funny, really, because he had no qualms about commitment when he asked me. When he, when he asked me to sleep with him, so that's um, what her mom said to her, to um, Toma. But father sounds far too dated, and I haven't even touched on the other stuff she said. Oh, um, the girl smiles. Her face remains pale and does not flush, but. I can imagine blood coursing beneath her cheeks all the same. She gives the impression of blushing, even though she does not. Yeah, she looks like she's blushing a little bit. The fog's not helping, though. I suppose most people would use dad nowadays. Forgive me, I'm not familiar with such a phrase, and it sounds quite peculiar, pe peculiar to me. And the plot thickens. <laughs> it does. My questions only seem to invite more questions, and I find myself drawn towards this strange girl, despite myself. I want to know who she is. I want to understand her. It must be this feeling, this desperate thirst for hidden knowledge, which encouraged Mom to track down what rem now remains of Zachary Kendall, Mary Bell Spencer, Rose Bradford, and the rest. So, um... I've not seen you around. Borrow be bef <laughs> Barbie borrow before. Do you live here? I have lived here for a very long time, but you didn't but you don't look much older than me. 
It will be... I will be 15 year, years old this December. At least I should be. So she's 14 too. You say that that you've lived here for a long time, but I've never seen you before. You don't go to St. Hughes, do you? She, say, she shakes her head. So what school do you go to? Redskin? Sandon? Not Waltz, Walton Girls? She shakes her head again. Then are you homeschooled? That would explain what she's doing in this graveyard at 20 past 8. 8.20. Yeah, on a Friday morning. Yeah, 20 past 8. Yeah, 8.20. On a Friday morning, wearing such a strange outfit, she might as well have fled from one of those ye olde fashioned photography parlor places. I, um, I suppose I was homeschooled, yes. I've never been to a school before. I used to have Ellie, but I have not seen her in some time. Ellie, a private tutor? Something like that, yes. I'm sorry, but these girls are so adorable. They're like little dolls. Like, um, Toma's like a modern day girl doll. Not like one of those American girl dolls. Cause those things freak me out. Dolls freak me out, okay. Like, especially those porcelain dolls, because they don't blink. They just stare at you. But she's like, she's like a cute doll. She's cute. I like her. And they're both cute. She's like, but yeah, Toma's like a modern day doll. And then she is like, one of those dolls that you would like, I guess you could say, You kind of like expect her to be like from a rich family back in the day. Should I say back in the day? Yeah, that's fine, whatever. But yeah, she's I forgot what she said. Um something like that, yeah. She was rather strict. She got so angry when I escaped from her stuffy old history lessons and hid all over the Lins Linton's state. She smiles a Hold up, hold up, hold it, Linton. Is that one of, mm, I don't know, okay. She smiles a soft smile. She smiles a soft, gentle smile, like an old woman with roomy eyes. I don't know if I said that right, I'm sorry. Might when Recalling a fond memory, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody my age pull a face like that before. Just who is this girl? But you don't have a tutor anymore. There wouldn't be much point anymore. Is she one of those YouTube celebrities then? She looks... She looks the part in those clothes. I can imagine her as one of those eccentric self-proclaimed living dolls yeah who get thousands of subscribers for eating food on camera <laughs> I don't know if living living dolls I'm doing air quotes you can't see that though living dolls eat food on camera I don't know I don't watch any living dolls I watch art videos and gaming videos and stuff like that so um I'm sorry this is the first question I should have asked what is your name Emily. Emily. I think I can I can remember that. It's a common enough name. There are two Emilys in my class. Emily Hargreaves and Emily Turner. I don't know if the name if this name fits this fits the girl in front of me though. Emily sounds too simple. Somehow and unfinished too, like a sentence ending without a full stop. I don't investigate any further, however, I hardly know this girl. What right do I have to ask so many questions? And and if it would n not be too rude, may I inquire as to what I should call you? Oh, um, I should have expected this. When somebody asks for your name, it's only polite to ask for theirs in return. I don't like answering this question, though I never have done. Just what is my name, anyway? 
It says Toma on my birth certificate, but I can't I, but I can't bring myself to believe that, not when I was fated before I took my first breath to be called Amelia. Oh my, don't look so troubled. You will make me feel guilty. I, I'm sorry. Ha, huh, what a funny girl. You do not need to apologize. She thinks I'm funny, does she? That kind of stings, given how peculiar she looks. I'm sorry, I, I can't talk. I think I might be a little sick, which is weird because it's summer, and it's really hot, and I'm already sweating. I'm sorry, that's TMI. But yeah, I don't know. My nose has been running lately. You don't need to tell me your name if you do not wish to. We all have our own secrets. Are you sure you don't mind? I'm quite sure. I could just make up a name for you instead. Well, I hope you are not adver adverse to the suggestion. I rather like giving people nicknames. I would always call Miss Warren Ellie. Her first name was Helena. Y you see, but she got mad at me because of that too. This girl has no manners. She would always say that. She may have a pretty face, but she behaves like a gutter snipe. I don't know what that is. Not that I have a button, what she thought. Father was paying her enough, so I thought it would it best to make her work for her wages. She may have found me irritating, but it was but I certainly wasn't boring. Well, I suppose it's fine. Then then I can think of a name for you? Yes, it doesn't bother me. Anything would be better than Toma. Well let's see. Emily looks up, looks me up and down, one finger against her lower lip. Her smile is teasing and her eyes flash mischievously like a naughty schoolgirl in the Enid Blyton story. She'll be taking, talking about condensed milk and tinned sardines next. I'm sure of it. Hmm, I thought so from behind. I thought so from behind too, but when you turned about it became clearer than ever. You have her nose and her eyes, maybe even her forehead too, but it's hard to tell since it's all covered in hair. While I look at the ground suddenly awkward and dig the tip of my school shoe into the earth, I lift my foot, right foot slightly, making a small indent in the earth. I'm in, I'm in it grave for an ant. I don't know if I like being compared to other people. I do that enough myself. Um, even if I do look like one of your friends, I don't think I want their name. I was hoping for a name of my own. Yes, of course. You do not need to worry about that. I would never be so callous as to address you in the title of another. I apologize if it seems that way. She does sound sorry, too. Truly sorry. Even if you look like her, you are not her. You couldn't be. It is not possible. A sigh. So let me see. A name for you. A name that belongs to you and only to you. Ah, I think I have it. From now on, you can be called Verenity. Oh, that's a pretty name. Verenity. Verity? No, not Verenity. Verity. Do you like it? It's pretty. Much prettier than my real name. Emily smiles, her face flushing, though once more, it doesn't really flush. I just imagine that it does with happiness. I'm so glad. I thought that virtue, virtue names might be too entronistic nowadays, but I, I truly am fond of them. One of my aunts was called Charity, and my brother was Patience. Not... Not that she was particularly patient. She used to hit my father for the smallest of mis mis misdemeanors when he was a young boy. But that, that was, but that was a long time ago. Her face darkens, but only for a for a few moments. At any rate, I'm curious. Why are you in a gloomy place like this? 
at such an hour when you should be at school? Oh, um, I just like graveyards, I guess. They're relaxing. Relaxing, that's a... Relaxing, that is quite the str strange thing to say. Why do you think that? I'm... I... I'm not sure. I just like them. They're nice and quiet, and people don't come here much. When they do, they're quiet too. It's a respectful thing to do. Apart from the local boys who trample about here, drunk on Friday nights, and piss on the headstones and scrawl rude words on them. I glanced at a nearby grave that of an Elijah or Alicia Faro. Somebody had scrawled across the top of it in a black marker pen, God is dead. Okay, that, um, yeah, I don't know. She looks surprised and she looks disturbed. So I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I definitely enjoyed this. I think this is going to be quite interesting. And this is only the beginning, so look forward to the next episode of the sad story of Emily, Emily Burns. I'm guessing that's her, the um doll. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and bye bye.